Welcome to the Anoxia Dynasty podcast. I'm your host, Jordan McNamara. It's a preview of a podcast that I released today over at analyticsdynasty.com for analyticsdynasty.com subscribers. Uh, again, Dynasty Daily podcast over there covering this week a variety of different things on free agency. Uh, I'm also getting into uh, uh, my first startup draft in terms of already recorded a podcast. Released it last week on the strategy of the team build. I'm going to record another one on how the team build went. Um, you know, some stuff on uh, trading every Thursday, which is what I'm doing uh, today, which you'll hear uh, the podcast for. So you check all that out at analyticsdynasty.com. Become a subscriber. Again, we have the trade database. This is the, the database that I pull all the trades from, uh, from thousands of leagues, over 5,000 leagues from uh, MFL. Uh, that that fuel our trade database. We also have our, our real draft position tracker up, which tracks uh, where players are going in real drafts, give you an actual median, so you can expect kind of around where you can target them in drafts. It's better than ADP. It's more uh, up-to-date than the mock draft stuff that you're going to get. You know, it hasn't even reacted to free agency yet. We're halfway through the month. It'll be another 25, 30 days before you'll get any of the actual ADP reacting to the stuff that is going on right now. So we have that up-to-date data, which can help you out. So again, go ahead and check out all of that, become an Analytics Dynasty subscriber. And listen, if you're not, if you still want to check it out, you want to, um, you're not sure, go ahead and get the book, AOD 2022 edition, lots of stuff on strategy in there, lots of team building stuff. Um, I, this is probably the biggest team building book that I've done out of the four. Um, very strategic in terms of, you know, how to put together teams and how to uh you know structure whether it's uh dynasty startup drafts dynasty trades you know the types of risks to bet to make the types of bets to make right those sorts of things really thinking about it strategically uh in this book more than maybe anyone that i've done before so go ahead and check all that out analyticsdynasty.com and until next time continue embracing the variance we'll talk again very soon Welcome to the Analytics of Dynasty Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan McNamara, and we are looking into uh, 10 trades. I just said, let's pick out 10 trades. I want to see where the market takes us. <laughs> and so we're going right to the AOD Trade Finder, the trade database there uh, over at the website. Uh, so just take a look at 10 different trades, randomly drawn, and see where we come out. So the first 10 we find. Stefan Diggs for Rashad Bateman and Albert Aquabunum. I'll say this, uh, two PPR, uh, start two wide receivers up to six. There's a number of flex, super flex. All these trades are super flex. Uh, start one tight end there. Um, I think this is a good deal in terms of upgrading from a couple of prospects, you know, to a stud. <laughs> I mean, this is that's a pretty clear jump for me. Um, I would do this. Uh, in prior years, maybe I wouldn't have done this. Um, I would do this because I think the odds that uh, the the dig side win on this are pretty good. Um, and you really need both Bateman and Alberto to come in uh, and and I think be at least fantasy starters to really pace the dig side on this over the next couple of years. And if that's and again, tight end can be pretty replaceable in that range. I think this is a good way to use Alberto uh, as a as an uptick trade piece. And, and move along. So that's, that's uh, I think, a pretty good deal. Next one here is Adam Thielen, a 2023 second and a 2024 second for Elijah Mitchell. Um, I, my response to this one is simply, and this is two tight end um, as well, it's a half PPR for wide receivers there. So maybe not necessarily the edge on a guy like Thielen over Mitchell, uh, who's not really going to catch probably a ton of balls. I would say this about about this deal. Uh, how much do we love Mitchell going forward, especially the, from a ceiling perspective? And does Thielen close to pace Mitchell now? And you, you have options here with picks going forward. You know, is one of those picks, I don't know, can that be a Fournette type situation? Can that be like a James Conner type situation, a 2023 second? I don't know. But maybe in season it is, right? I mean, if that's sort of where you want to, if you need running back help, that would be how I would do it. So I would take the Thielen pick side of this because I think it's a two-way go. 
you have the ability to beat Mitchell with Thielen straight up, and then you've got picks as outs. Um, again, I don't think this is probably going to be one of those ones where there's a huge loss um, on either side. Right? But I do think if you add it up, I think the odds are uh, better on the pick and the Thielen side. I just question some of the ceiling out of the the San Francisco backfield as well as uh, I'm not – ever convinced that I know what they're going to do at the position. So for those reasons, I'm going uh, the Thielen and pick side. All right, third one up here is uh, Derek Carr, Cam Akers, and 105 for Joe Burrow. My instant reaction to this is, could you have done better at the quarterback position? Could you have gotten Prescott? Could you have gotten uh, Herbert? Could you have gotten Watson for cheaper? Um, all of those things would have been sort of how it initially gone. I don't think the price is bad for a top six to eight quarterback. Again, I would probably hesitate to pay if that's Burrow. Um, this, you know, could you have gone cheaper for a guy like Russell Wilson? Uh, that would sort of be my thought here. I don't think that the, I don't think the deal is terrible. I don't think the deal is, um, uh, I, I don't think the values that bad um i would just sort of aim differently right i would just aim at uh you know maybe burrow's a pivot piece you know is burrow a pivot piece up you know that could be um i, I think maybe selling acres a little bit low as well um I, I would i would package the car acres and 105 piece for an upgraded quarterback but i wouldn't do it in this manner um, so that would sort of be my thought i'd stay probably liquid with the guys um, or my initial my, my next step would be to sort of pivot from Burrow up. Um, Cause I think you could go, I mean, you could get Russell Wilson for cheaper and I feel probably better about uh, a, a lot of his projections than I do about Burrows here in the next, you know, uh, two to three year window. And then after that is a wide range of outcomes. So that would sort of be my thought. All right. Uh, the next one up is, uh, this is a really interesting one uh, because we are um, we're going to see movement here, and this is going to be Trevor Lawrence, Mitchell Trubisky, 102, and a 2023 20, second for Deshaun Watson and Evan Ingram. Uh, let's just work backwards here. So Evan Ingram uh, goes to Jacksonville. Listen, this is a two PPR, uh, four tight ends. You can start up to five tight ends um it's super flex so really the the max you're going to start is four tight ends but you know in a flex scenario evan ingram's probably a starter would sort of be my thought um you know he's probably a starter so um there's there's plenty of um lineup spots to fill to so start 10 league you could start again you could start assuming you're in a super flex spot you could start uh they're starting a quarterback in a super flex spot. You can start four tight ends, and I think Ingram probably fits in that. He'll eat your innings in that range. I think he has some upside that's been un, untapped. Deshaun Watson, listen, I think he's quarterback five in that range. Um, I would have trouble going less than him, uh, less than that on him. Uh, and then as you look at the other side, um, you know, I, I think that I've talked about this. I think the Trubisky side is really interesting. Uh, I think it's interesting as a football maneuver. Um, is he anything more than maybe quarterback two in a best case scenario? Uh, maybe that's about what he is. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, listen, he's way behind Watson for me. Um, you know, I have him probably outside the top 10. And, you know, and I think that the difference between Trevor Lawrence and Watson when they're both on the field is immense just from a probabilities perspective. So I, I'm a big, I'm big on that side. Again, then you're probably giving up a day two running back. Would sort of be my thought at 102, or you're giving up, you know, maybe quarterback one. Um, so then again, do you think like, hey, a couple of quarterbacks, uh, unproven quarterbacks versus a really proven quarterback? I mean, you start matching those pieces. That's basically a three for one on that front. And then you say Ingram and in the second cancel. That's kind of what you're looking at. You know, just take Ingram in the second and set him aside, and you start looking at the the other pieces of it. Um, I think it's a clear win for the Watson side. I would do this. Um, you know, the, but the problem with this, I just tell you, is you should have done it a month ago. You should have done it six months ago. You should have done it a year ago. Um, and I, I think that we were right on the Watson stuff. Uh, there's still some risk there for sure. 
Um, but I think largely we were right. And this is the problem when you're on the wrong side of that because you have to wait. And now you got to give up a lot of assets to get an elite asset. Again, I think he's a top five quarterback. Um, I have questions about Lawrence and to sort of pay 102, like you kind of do that to get to a super max quarterback. Like that's what you do. I just wish that you had taken the the risk on this later or, or earlier right? at a lesser cost, if you will. Um, I just wish that that would have been what the the angle was there. So, um, yeah, so I'd give me the Watson side. Next side up here is Keyshawn Vaughn and Curtis Samuel for 302, 303, and 402. I'll take the pick side. Uh, I, I think it's unlikely that Vaughn or Samuel's a difference maker. I understand that there's a, uh, a blank spot in, on the Tampa Bay offense and someone is going to fill it. I understand that. I tend not to think that it's going to be the guy that's played very minimal snaps uh, offensively in the past, uh, you know, to date in his career. Um, you know, a couple years in here. So give me the pick side, give me the flexibility. Um, I think you could address a, a situation, whether it's a, a a wide receiver that you have a need at some depth or a running back with the picks, um, either whether that be in a rookie draft or they're part of a pick package. So give me the pick side of that one. All right, next one up here. This is a lot of moving pieces. Um, so bear with me. I got it. Right in a row here, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, Marvin Jones, Elijah Moore, uh, 212, 308, and 403. And then on the flip side of that is Zeke Pollard, 207 and 210. I'll say instantly, um, I'm just thinking almost entirely about the asset situation here, right? What do we, let's go directly to the hierarchy of assets. How do we think about these? Um, you know, this puts Zeke basically in the contributor category um, as of right now, given his market value. Um, Pollard also in the contributor category, which is interesting. Um, no one else is in this deal. Uh, Elijah Moore is, I take that back, but no one else on the other side is. Um, I understand why someone would take the Elijah Moore side of this. Um, uh, listen, I'm taking Zeke over Elijah Moore. And... You know, when you look at the rest of this deal, I mean, I think Pollard probably matches Singletary in terms of lineup expectation and the like. And then the picks are are on uh, for, uh, honestly, they're on the the Zeke side. So give me the Zeke Pollard side of this one again. I just I like to sort of break it down for you why I think that way, but I, I hope that helps. Okay, next one up here, um, an interesting moving piece on. James Connor. So James Connor, 106 and two thirds next year. So two 2023 20, third round rookie picks for Jalen Waddle. Um, I'm taking Waddle on this one. Uh, but again, I think you look at you look at this. Just apply AOD principles to this. This is a star player for. Um, I think ultimately when it sort of settles out, you're getting a contributor and a core asset on the flip side. I like James Conner. I like the pick as an asset. Um, but this is why you'd use it, right? You use that for for an uptick. Again, is it a net loser maybe in terms of total points this year? I mean, maybe. Uh, but I think you like the asset on Waddle. I mean, it's much more difficult to fill in that Waddle spot in terms of like a long-term wide receiver asset than it is to fill in a situation like James Conner. Uh, so I think that that is a pretty good deal there. So number six, give me Waddle. All right, next up, Albert O for 308 and a 2023 20, second, uh, two PPR. And I believe this is a safe leagues format. Um, I think I take the pick. Uh, and uh, the the one situation that I would ask myself is this, and this really harkens back to the situation for Hayden Hurst. And I really remember this, and this Hayden Hurst is one of those paradigm shifting ones for me because I, I said, well, we have to think about how we how we do this, right? If Alberto finishes as like a tight end ten, which is kind of, you know tight end ten, tight end twelve, tight end fourteen, somewhere in there. Let's just assume he finishes at his ADP and his ADP is right around the the tight end one two range. Let's just assume that for a second. What's gonna happen to his price? He's gonna fall. 
um, that's what happened to Hayden Hurst. Uh, I think that's what would happen to Albert O. And, uh, you know, why would you pay a future second for that? It, right, because I think you can replicate it in other ways. You know, could you pay a present second right now for a guy like, um, you know, Cole Komet, who in in reality probably pretty close to paces that. You know, could you pay a present second for uh, Evan Ingram? You know, could you do certain things like that that I think are are cheaper? You know, listen, if maybe this was a later second this year, uh, you know, we could rethink that. Um, but but I I hate giving up the future asset just because you you you're paying on credit for something that's not a sure thing. And it's like, you know, this is like going to QVC and buying stuff on credit. I just, I I hate doing that. I hate that as a concept. So give me the pick. um, And I think there's a different way to go about this. Again, later second this year, fine. Um, If you want to go that route, that's fine. Um, You know, Evan Ingram for later second this year or something like that. I mean, um, I think there's other ways to go about this deal to get at sort of the same types of outcomes. All right, next one up here, we have uh, Kareem Hunt, LaVisca Chenault. A 2023 20, first and a 2023 20, second for Mike Evans and Allen Robinson. Um, again, I'm a huge Mike Evans fan. This is start with three wide receivers. I like Allen Robinson as well. Um, this is really, really feels a lot like the pick for the player. Um, I'll just, for the sake of argument, say that Hunt and Allen Robinson sort of cancel each other out. And you're kind of looking at the LaVisca Chenault. Uh, for Evans in the pick, right? That would kind of be how I'd be- value this one. Um, is there other ways to sort of get at what Mike Evans offers at a cheaper price than this? I think that there probably is. I mean, heck, could you spin the second off and get Brandon Cooks and sort of net uh, first out of this? I think you could probably do that, um, and that'd be really interesting. So I'm taking the pick side of this. Again, I, I don't usually go against Mike Evans, but I'm taking the pick side of this because I think that you can definitely do that, and I think it's interesting. Um, and I think that you have it gives you some flexibility. Plus, it also gives you some some ceiling upside too. So you're going to take a hit at wide receiver, uh, but I think you could fill in stuff. You know, could you give a second for a guy like Lockett? Could you give you know do those sorts of deals? I think you could. I mean, how could you give uh, a later second this year for a guy like Jarvis Landry if he lands up with some free agency and and maybe pace pretty close to what Evans does? Um, I think you could get pretty close to it, assuming that Evans isn't like a top three guy this year, right? And I think that that's you could sort of pace that and then uh, and and figure that out. So yeah, give me give me the pick again. This is another one you think about if you're giving a top if you're giving a future first, are you getting a top thirty asset back? I think the answer is no. And as a result, give me the pick. All right, next one up is. Lamar Jackson and Nick Chubb. So big deal here for Patrick Mahomes and James Robinson and 312. Give me the Mahomes side. I mean, I have a lot more faith in Mahomes than I do Lamar Jackson. Um, contractually, uh, as well as as a passer, I have con- questions and concerns. I think they, to a large degree, probably mirror what the concerns Baltimore has about him. Right, He's regressed as a passer the past couple of years. It's not what you want to see. Um, I think Mahomes is, uh, you know, a floor for Mahomes looks like something in the mid-running uh, quarterback ones, and that's a really, really high floor. Um, and so give me, you know, totally give me that situation. Again, you're losing Nick Chubb. It, it, I don't think Robinson and, and the pick really do too, too much, uh, but I think you don't you know, uh, would I've liked to sort of structure those a little bit different in terms of getting different types of assets in there? Can you make that, you know, maybe someone we like better as an injury away type, you know, um, can you get just, I'm, I'm concerned about the changing landscape there for Robinson, the changing, you know, with the injury as well. Could you get a better uh, injury away type? Um, you know, could you get, uh, you know, could you, factor in maybe a third to a second pick upgrade in this, right? Could you sort of do finagle around the margins to make it a little bit better? But ultimately I like the Patrick Mahomes side of the Lamar Jackson, Nick Chubb deal. I'd maybe structure it just a tad different, but I like it. So that's the 10 trades. I do want to note uh, a couple of, uh, just a couple of points here on the, uh, on a, tr- on a trade that I did see later on. I'm not going to do a full commentary on it, but, but Jarvis Landry for 306. Um, again, we talked about ways to try and figure out and get at the solution to the problem in the Mike Evans vein. Like that's a way 
to say, hey, listen, like, I don't know if he totally paces Evans, but if he's the starting wide receiver, if he's a wide receiver one in an Atlanta offense with a good quarterback, all of a sudden, like, you're, there's some decent volume there. If he stays healthy, I think he could sort of pace along. And I, I didn't see a huge, huge drop off in terms of his production. I think that's a, a different way to sort of think about, you know, plugging maybe a hole. That's pretty cheap. It looks like it's there's some IDP aspects to that as well. So maybe it's a, not fully a third in, in your normal league. But uh, Jarvis Landry guy, I think, can still help you. Um especially at that cost when you look at him on the on the ADP curve or the RDP curve or keep trade cut or whatever these like the one guy that st- there's two guys that really stick out in terms of efficiency later on it's him and it's uh, Julio and you know they're they're really high on the on the per opportunity scoring uh, scale so Assuming that he gets more of those opportunities, I, I kind of like that bet to eat you some innings at a, at a cheap cost. So, did want to throw that one in there as well. So, it's like a Baker's dozen. So, 10 plus 1. Till next time, continue embracing the variance. We'll talk again very soon.